My name is Dara Prince Michael, aka Kobe Prince. You can call me Mickey for short. My guests for today are CISOs, School Improvement Support Officers, in contact South Municipal Education Directorate. You are welcome, sir. Uh, I will give you the opportunity to please introduce yourself to my cherry viewers out there. So I'll start from you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, Miki. I'm happy to be on your show today. Thank you. Uh, my name is Wisdom Kofi Mensah from Municipal Education Office in Kwanta Start. I am the CISO for Kachiri Circuit. Thank you very much. You're yeah, welcome. You're yeah, welcome, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, too, for this uh, important uh, project. And uh, my name is William Opari. Um, I'm grateful for the program we have here now. And I'm the CISO, the School Improvement Support Officer for Nkwanta Waste at the Nkwanta Municipal Education Directorate. Thank you very much. Okay. Hansen Jandu, I am a CISO for Bonacha North. All right, welcome, sir. Thank welcome. You. Uh, this is the True Talk Show. Like I said, what we do is to impact knowledge. We want to make difference in our community. And not only our community alone, but Ghana as a whole. So our the topic we are framed for today's today's section is the current education system in Ghana. You know, out there people believe that the old system is quite better than this new system. And what are the changes in the new syllabus compared to the old one? Yeah, right. Thank you very much. Um Charles US we uh, want to thank Mickey for the opportunity given to us this afternoon to elaborate on some issues concerning education in Ghana and our municipality. The old syllabus and the new curriculum, this time we call it curriculum, okay. not syllabus again. Okay. All right, so when we talk of a syllabus, what does it mean? Now, the old syllabus, we say this current syllabus is a standard-based curriculum. Okay. We call it a standard-based curriculum. So now we don't call it syllabus anymore. So no. It's not a curriculum. It's a curriculum. You know, uh, previously, previously we call it syllabus, syllabus, syllabus. But it's still a curriculum. So okay. the curriculum is talking about what is being studied. And the syllabus is talking about what is being studied. We are only just a change of name. So we are saying that um, this new curriculum is standard based when you come to the primary schools the primary schools we call it standard based curriculum then at the junior high school we we call it the common core program the common core program and then the standard based curriculum now i must say that the old curriculum does not have so much difference as compared to this current curriculum but the other thing is that um, the old, old syllabus is objective based but the current curriculum we are using is standard based now what do we mean by objective based curriculum objective based curriculum the sense that the children learn we encode we say they chew they pour they pass their exams and that ends it but the common core program or the standard based curriculum is a curriculum that meets international standard so currently a child in class one, what that child learns in class one should be the same as a child in uh, UK, what that child in UK learns in class one. So you see that it is not standardized as compared to previously when Ghana we were using just our own um, curriculum, we learn, we go internationally and we are nowhere to get closer to, to those people out there. So that is one of the main differences. Currently we are uh, the benchmark, okay. currently now is international. Wow. So we are we, we, we can say that we are uh, our standard currently is meets the international standard. So that is one of the differences. And we also have what we call the uh, uh, the six core competencies that currently are found in the new curriculum. The six core competencies that's critical thinking and problem solving. We also have digital literacy, citizenship. We also have creativity and imagination and their communication and collaboration. So these are the core competencies that the new curriculum delves into. Okay. So at the end of the period of stay in a school, a child is expected to be digitally literate. A child is 
uh, supposed to develop that patriotic um, lifestyle to see Ghana as his or her country. A child is supposed to develop the critical thinking skills and that child should be able to communicate effectively irrespective of where the child finds him or herself. So in Ghana, outside Ghana, wherever that child finds himself, we expect that that child should be very good when it comes to communicating with other people outside there and then digitally literate. So this is also another difference when we, we, we talk about the old curriculum and the current curriculum. Now, the Common Core program, like we're talking about, the Common Core program usually is, um, starts is a four-year you know, program, right from GHS1 to SHS1, where they run a Common Core program. That is the meaning is just very simple. So they go into computing, so JHS1, they'll be doing computing, SHS1, they do computing, and then SHS2, uh, uh, JHS3, from JHS1 to SHS1, they run a common core program. Now, they, we have creativity as a common core program. Now, previously, what happens is that when a child gets to JHS3, that child chooses a course that he or she wants to afford it. Uh, senior high school. So the Common Core program has come in to put a stop to that. The child will get to JSHS 1 before that child det um, determines which course he or she is going to offer. That, so it means that offering a particular course at a senior high school will start from SHS 2. That's the implication. So the, with the people say the old curriculum was quite better and this new curriculum is not good. No, that, that, that is not it. When you, when you take um, some of the things, uh, you consider the competencies that a child is going to gain in this new curriculum, then you realize that yes, the new curriculum isn't bad. It isn't well, bad. Most teachers themselves also say how that they, they don't know the head and tail of the new curriculum as in uh, some of the some, some of them are practicals and some of them are they are okay in short they say there are no materials to teach mm. this new car there are no materials to teach that will also guide the children what do you have to say about it all right very good it's very good like you are saying it is true that the concept isn't bad the concept of the standard based curriculum isn't bad but like we are saying we have we have uh, challenges I I admit the fact that we have challenges when it comes to implementing the new curriculum. We have challenges. And that is like they are saying textbooks, uh, DLMs and other things. Yes, it is true. But the, when the, we talk of the concept or the, uh, the content, the content isn't bad. But we have challenges. And we admit that fact, that we have challenges. In the educational system, we have challenges because when the teacher says, "I have no um, teaching and learning resource to you know provide help to my learners," I wouldn't say no. That child, that, that teacher has it and is not ready to release it. No, but the fact is that the those material thing has existed and it is still existing, and we admit the fact that truly there is a problem, and the problem is that we do not have all the resources for us to be able to implement. Like I said earlier, I said the Common Core Program or the Standard Based Curriculum is geared towards helping the child to develop some skills. Now, how do we help that child to develop those skills if the materials are not available for that child? So it is true that we, we have to, some challenges with regards to this current, um, in implementing this curriculum. Yes. Well, what we are trying to say is that the new curriculum doesn't have any bad content like the way people say it. People say it, there is no, even though there are challenges, but yet it's international standard. All right, so my next question for you. Uh, the teaching of technical and practical subjects in basic schools of today are very poor. A child attended class one to GSS3, completed without any basic skills such as computing, basketry, drawing, dancing just to mention a few why is this so is it the teacher who fails to teach or the student fails to learn thank you very much Mickey. Uh, the reality is that you know there are some uh, materials that are needed for teaching especially 
And if you don't have those materials, to make your lesson practical becomes a little difficult. So although they talk about um, uh, those skills, the materials are not there. If they are there, then it will mean that, that the teacher is improvising. Now, if the teacher is improvising and uh, the children are there, they will recapture everything that they should have gotten. But if those things are not there, it makes it a little difficult for the children to comprehend. Take for instance, you're taking ICT and you don't have these computers to let children have first hand on those things. It becomes very difficult for them to comprehend, to understand exactly what you're teaching them. So, it is not the teacher per se who is not doing it. Although, at some areas and places, they, were, they are supposed to teach ICT, but then the teacher has no knowledge about that one. And if the teacher has no knowledge about that one, then how does he teach? He can't teach. And therefore, it becomes a little bit a problem. Now, if he has it and the materials are there, perfect. At other places, they are doing it. But it's not uh, around. So, when we talk about, is it the children that are not learning? Really, in reality, some of the children, you know, the parents don't give them the opportunity to, you know, um, come out that way. But then, they are trying. Not that they are not trying, they are trying, but are not getting exactly as what uh, should be gotten. So, looking at the whole, we'll see that there is a limitation, like my earlier speaker, or the earlier speaker was saying that there is a challenge. And if those challenge, challenges will be overcome, then we will see that... A letter to what my senior man rightly said, we, um, when it comes to the children having knowledge about these practical subjects, it is in two folds. One, from the teacher or from the learner. What do I mean by this? Um, you were talking about basketry, ICT, and some other things. Frankly speaking, when you consider Ghana's education, our educational system in good is bookish. What do I mean by bookish? When it is just theory, 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 theory. That is why you, you see students coming out from the university and engineering students, they come out and they, they, they can't even produce anything. They can't produce anything. Simply because you ask them when it comes to theory, they will tell you how an aeroplane can be manufactured. By practicality, you ask them, they can't. That is Ghana's education. So that is why the implementation of this new curriculum, we all embraced it from the beginning because we felt that that was actually coming to um, keep the problem that we're having. Now, when it isn't all schools that do basketry, but all schools in Ghana do ICT now. Yeah. But to surprise you to note that you get to some places, the teacher, we have computers, but there's no teacher to handle computer, the, the, the ICT. There's no teacher to handle ICT with the children. You go to some places, we have teachers to handle ICT, we have no computers for the teacher to use. So you are asking whether it is for the children or it's for the teacher. No, it is, uh, it, it is a, a challenge. The teacher problem and the child problem. For the learners, one thing is that Every learner has the ability to learn, provided that child is being taught. That child is being taught. So if I am, if that child is taking through intensive training, that child will get it. But the materials are not there. The human resource is not there. People have completed the university and they have no knowledge about ICT. We chewed and we poured. On the paper, for that matter, we have passed our items. You go, you have ICT, A, B, C, B plus, and that's all. But when it comes to the practicality, no, they have no idea. They have forgotten about what they have learned. So I must say that um, when it comes to our educational system, uh, we actually have a challenge which needs to be resolved. And I think that this must start from the grassroots. But start from the grassroots. And it is the same problem is happening because these Students we are teaching are the same children that become the future teachers. Now these students are not being taught the basic skills, the basic ICT, just as some of us suffered. Until we, we got to some, uh, uh, maybe the, the uh, senior high schools and then the colleges of education that we had to have a first-hand experience in using computers. This same thing is happening.
Now, some are privileged to have this um, first-hand experience in using ICT, having good, um, uh, coming from good homes, and for that matter, they have laptops and these toy computers and other things in their homes, so they learn. But, my brother, go to the typical village, like Chati, Mafia and others. There is no light. There is no light. So we have teachers there, currently as we speak now, who are ICT inclined. They are IT inclined. But there is nothing for them to use. Even if there is computer, there is no light. My brother, you can imagine how this teacher is going to impact knowledge onto this children. So that is the major problem that we have. So why should GES take over the timely examination question from the schools? Uh, it is said that laws are made by human beings. But the same laws can be changed to suit every uh, situation. The common exams. Normally, we invite questions from teachers who are teaching in the classrooms. So teachers are, are given a time period, a period where they're supposed to submit questions. So we invite questions from almost all disciplines. Then we elect a board or we select some people to uh, reselect or rearrange the questions that have been uh, brought forward. Then the right materials have been selected from uh, out of them. So it is not somebody who sits at the corner somewhere to say the questions. The questions come from the same teacher who is teaching the classroom. The only thing the board does is to compile or select questions from, let's, let's say, school A will set question 1, school B, question 2, school C, question 3, in that order. So nobody sits anywhere to set the exams, but it's the same teachers who normally set the exam questions. My brother has just said, GS has not taken over exams. This has existed for a very long time. But they don't say the exams, from, the schools don't say the exams again. Now, let me explain this. When we talk of schools, GS, like he said, who, is in, who sets the exams in the school? The teacher. Yeah. And the teacher is GS employee. Mm -hmm. Now, if the exams is set outside the school, who sets the exams? The teacher. And that same teacher is a GES employee. But what happens here is that, um, remember I told you about having a standardized, uh, we are now internationally, uh, we have the benchmark currently now is international, right? Okay, so we have NSAT, what we call uh, National Standardized Test. That one is from National. National Standardized Test for Class 2, Class 4, and Class 6. National Standardized Test. But apart from that, schools set their questions. We was referring to having a common exams. That common exams is just trying to know if you you are in line with me. For example, you go to some schools and some teachers feel busy in, in even teaching. Now, if you know there is going to be a common exams, you are forced to teach and meet that standard. You are forced to teach and meet that standard. For example, if I am to uh, maybe uh, start from uh, maybe uh, should I say chapter 1 or to ch chapter 10 and that person is in uh, social and social school starting from chapter 1 to chapter 4 in one thing because I know I'm going to set my questions even if I should just teach just one topic I have no problem because I am going to set the question now another person in another school may, might have taught uh, about five topics I get it so if there is a common exams we, we are not saying that the, the, maybe the common exams is... I don't know what you were yeah. you are referring to, if you are referring to common exams. Fine, the common... Like the timely exams we write. The, the timely exams, exam, yeah. that's what I'm trying to refer to. So the, these timely exams we write in schools, it, is, it, it has not been uh, taken away from the schools. It has not been taken away from the teachers. Now even these common exams, it is reps, teachers from the various schools that come together to set the questions. You see, my challenge here is that, mm. like you said, some deprived areas that they don't have enough teachers. Maybe a, a, maybe three teachers 
are teaching from class one to class six and this person have to meet these standard exams how will it be how will it be easy for them to do that the issue is that that's why they are following the curriculum the curriculum has specifications where the teacher should go right so if the teacher is not able to cover that place at that given time then it will mean that the teacher is not doing what is expected of him and therefore the children will not be able to write the common exam because they have not gotten there very good so it could also happen that in the village typical villages there are no teachers for those subjects and some people will be sacrificing to do those ones that is why many times most of those schools don't perform because they don't have adequate uh, human resources for what they are supposed to do. That is, um, you will see that the common exam is a standardized examination where they will test everybody at the same level. Those who will be writing at Accra and those who will be writing over here, the BEC, is the same thing they are writing. And therefore, if the common exam comes, then it makes it a way that teachers will be enhanced to teach what is expected of them and to cover the time and syllabus or what we call it as the curriculum so that the children will be able to get it so it's not the question of saying that um, why are children not doing well right? okay so nobody sees somewhere to set the exams is the disciplines who comes together from different institutions or different schools to set the exam for the purpose. All right. So, why should GES instruct teachers not to give students corporal punishment? Now, um, like I said earlier, on corporal punishment is inflicting pain on the child for one reason or another. That is whether he knows something and he, or he doesn't know something that he they do want him to you know get the thing. Now, corporal punishment inflicting pain we have it in different different ways that is why today punishment is not like we see it other times but we have something like positive punishment what is positive punishment to correct a child from a behavior which the child is not supposed to have put on now let's take for example the child is not able to write this sentence very well then i say okay for this reason you are going to write a full page, a full book of what sentence you have not done well. And after the child had written that one for some time, the child becomes conversant with that statement. And wherever you want the child to write, he's able to write it well. That's punishment, but positive, right? But on the other hand, if you are given a corporal punishment, other times you hurt the child. And the child may not love that subject because they have been hurt. Have you seen this one? I know some children, some people, dislike mathematics teachers because in the beginning the mathematics teachers did not help them very well. So therefore, they wouldn't want to go to the mathematics class because of that punishment. So the government wants to put things in place. Okay, let me add a letter to what he had just said. Now, when we talk of corporal punishment, like he said, um, it is intended to cause pain. It's a phys physical force on the child. Beating, spanking, asking the child to eat soap, you know, hitting and so many things. That is what we call corporal punishment. Now, why did the, the parents send the child to school? The child is sent to school to learn. So if I come to school and the teacher teaches and I'm unable to get the concept, should that, should that guarantee the teacher to inflict pain on me? I have come to learn. So if I am unable to learn a particular concept at a particular time, you, the teacher, is there because of the child. Inflicting pain on the child will not make the child learn. It will rather make the child hate the subject. So you see, so when you get to some schools, all the children are very good when it comes to mathematics, but mathematics is seen as a very difficult subject. But that teacher, because of the methodology the teacher uses, the, 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 the rapport that the teacher creates with the students, the, the children like mathematics. But maybe reading subjects, where we see, oh, for reading subjects, every child should be able to read and write. But you, you go to some schools and teach, children find it very difficult to even do those reading subjects. So what we are saying over here is that uh, corporate punishment, uh, Taking corporate punishment out of our schools is not the reason why children 
disobey their parents at home. Mm. The children spend more time in the house even than the school. Than the school. We are in the school to teach. We are not to inflict pain on the children. So if the, you, you bring your child to me and you're asking me to punish the child, when the child comes to you, you have nothing to do to your own child. Whether your child uh, sleeps in the house or not, no. Then you see them walking to the school. When the teacher is supposed to be in class and teach, the parents will now be marching to schools asking teachers, teacher, come and kill my child for me. Now my child has done this in the house. You are bringing what the child did in the house. You are asking the teacher to kill the child. But, like he said earlier, that's what we have, what we call positive punishment or uh, punishment tools or positive reinforcement that we use in our schools. And do teachers know of this? They know. Teachers know of this. For example, if, if I have given a child what to do, for example, to read and the child is able to read, give that child a punishment and that punishment can be reach this whole passage before tomorrow make sure you learn this whole thing it is a punishment look learning is not easy learning is not that easy that child going to make sure i learn this whole thing before the next day it's a punishment sure rather than you giving the child lashes inflicting on the child and the child hasn't learned anything the child hasn't learned anything so why would you rather ask the child to write if it is writing that the child is unable to write ask the child okay now write this whole passage on uh, uh, maybe uh, in your book maybe write it over and over and over and over again until you know it so tomorrow morning then the first thing i'm going to do is to inspect what you have done it is a punishment you see it was surprising to know that that child is a type that would not sit down and learn but that punishment asking the child to make sure he does that before the following day come on that child will sit down and learn because he knows the first thing my teacher will ask is about what I ask him to do. So my brother, Mickey, like we are, we are, the corporate punishment is not the best, you know, it is not the best, it is not good, it is rather causing problems in, in our education system. You go, I have not gone outside the country though, but studies tell us that you go to the outside world, they don't inflict pain on the children, but the children are making progress. The children are well disciplined. You see, education starts from the house. Seriously. It starts from the home. If you ask your child to come to school, you see, the children coming to school late. Started from the house. I am telling you, they start from the house. It means that even when they convey meeting in the house, that child comes to late and the parents say nothing. You, the parents, is ensure that your child goes to school. Your, the parent is, is on consent. So if you are concerned, the child goes to school late, and we are saying the child is, uh, has come to school late, and for that matter, we have to punish the child, we have to inflict pain on the child, we have to hit the child. Some you go to some places, and the teacher. I remember those days when we, we used to practice those things. Hey, it wasn't easy, but but we have realized that it, it is not the best. My brother, it is rather killing the children. Look, some children have stopped schooling because of this, and most people also uh, think that is lack of the corporate punishment in the schools that is why the student misbehave of late uh, yes the, that, that is the notion that that is the notion but that isn't uh, fully the reason let me take it that way that is not fully the reason the PTA may be and its issues do students do pay PTA yes they do okay. but not all schools <laughs> is it, are they not selected schools to pay no, PTA? No, there, there's, there's nothing like select, selection here. This time we, we call it PA, mm -hmm. Parents okay. Association. Okay. Now, if parents of a school decide that we are going to pay a levy to develop the school, what is wrong with that? The government hasn't said parents should support schools. You see, that is, that is one problem that we have. You see, that government says no PTA, nobody should pay PTA levy. That isn't what the government is saying. Government supports schools. Government at the point um, used to um, put funds into accounts of schools just to support them so that parents will, be, uh, will not be burdened on payment of uh, monies and other, some other things in the school. But that doesn't mean that you should not support schools. Currently we have 
uh, reconstitution of SMCs. And per the policy, parents and stakeholders, it is not just parents, but the community, you see, we should understand that the school is for the community, the school belongs to the community, it is not for government. Government has come to establish, is, uh, has sent teachers there to teach. But if there is any problem in the school, it is the responsibility of the community to ensure that we resolve all issues and, in the school. And that is why the name of the community is given to the school. That is why the name of the community is given to the school. So if we decide that, okay, we parents, we, we want to contribute to this to support the development of, of the school. Government is not going to say no. Don't support your school. Don't let the school grow. Government is not going to say that. So I, I will say that we have some schools that parents have agreed to develop their schools. And we have we go to com some communities and the parents are not ready. So I will say that schools that have agreed, I mean communities that have agreed to support their schools, they do it. And currently, uh, the, the, like I said earlier, we organize general assemblies and these general assemblies, uh, stakeholders come and funds are even raised. It is allowed. Funds can be raised to support the school. So we have something we call co-speed which they prepare, the whole community sits down, okay, um, we want to, currently we have up to classes and there's the need for us to get a JHS. For now, government is unable to provide a JHS for us, but we feel our children shouldn't travel far to attend the JHS. They should attend JHS right in our community. So what do we do? So that means in one way or the other, we still pay the PTA. Yes, we do. Wow. We do. But it's just that it is... It is the mode of the payment has changed. It has changed. In a sense that it is not only the parents. You see, it, this time it is not only the parents. Mm -hmm. It is it is the whole community. Because the school is not for parents of children who um, was uh, in the school. For example, if my child is in the school, it means I the school belongs to me. No, the school is for everybody. If I other your school, why other your walls is there or, or not, not? It's for the community. It's for the community. So today my child may not be there. Tomorrow my grandson or child will be there. It's true. So the school is for all of us. And so there is the need for us to ensure that we, we uh, put things right. But payment of PTA, say teachers announcing to parents, you have to come and pay PTA. If you don't pay, we will kill you, we will sack you. That one is out. out. Mr. Barry, <laughs> your advice to, to teachers and students out there. My advice to teachers is that they should, you know, take time and deliver what they are expected to deliver and to be very careful about what we call this corporal punishment. Apart from that, they should also hold their work fervently and do it assiduously so that um, the children you are teaching today will be somebody tomorrow over there. And if you don't do them well now, tomorrow they will also do the wrong thing over there. So we do the right thing here. And then children, I will tell them that they should try as much as possible to focus on what the teacher is teaching them. And after that, they will be able to ask questions, ask uh, you know, pertinent questions which uh, are, uh, are bothering them at home, especially pertaining to their subjects or what they are learning. And also, they should also make sure that they go to school and really they respect the teacher, they respect their parents. And that one will be what we have. Thank you for watching and let's meet again next week.